Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today we're continuing our message, our, our message series entitled Faith Revisited. This here is our sixth message in the series and is entitled How to Attain Faith. Now, next week Sunday is Palm Sunday. And I can hardly believe that it's it's Palm Sunday, it's Easter already. But they tell us that it's Easter, so I guess we have to believe that it's Easter. But time is flying by so quickly that it, it, it's like a blur. Anyway, we'll have to take a short sabbatical. Well, I guess it's not going to be so short because the following Sunday is going to be Resurrection Sunday. So we'll take off two Sundays in a row. And we'll take that short break and we'll get back and finish up this series. I sincerely hope that you have enjoyed this series as much as I have enjoyed it. And I hope that you've learned as much as I have learned. Anyway, Jesus spent a lot of his time preaching about faith. He spent a lot of time actually teaching about faith. And not just faith, but Oh, pistis, the faith, this mustard seed, mountain moving faith. Why? Because we, we, his, his children, his, the blood bought, the redeemed, we are his hands and his feet here upon the earth. And it is up to us now, since Jesus has gone up into heaven, he has left us here to, to, to perform these signs and these wonders and these miracles and mighty acts of healing in his name that he might receive honor, that he might receive glory. But we cannot do that. We cannot perform these signs and wonders and miracles and healings without Oho Pistis. So it's so important that we learn how to couple what we hear or mix what we hear with the faith. Now, if you haven't seen part one, part two, part three, part four, and part five, I would suggest that you go ahead and view those videos. And um, they're, 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 um, they're right there on, on our website, and I'm sure there'll be a link there. But it will help you to understand what faith is and help you to gain faith to move mountains. Today, I want to speak with you about building or, or, or fueling your faith. Turn with me, please, to our scripture reading found in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It's just one verse of scripture. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Faith comes from hearing, right? Faith and hearing, hearing and faith are tightly intertwined together to build Oho faith, the faith, or Oho pistis, the faith. It seems to me that faith cannot be built or it cannot be had without hearing. We first have to hear. We covered the, the difference between ordinary faith and the faith, Oho pistis, in our first video in this series. So. I'm not going to rehash that. But if hearing is so important to my, the faith, I really need to understand what hearing is. If I'm going to mix it with my faith to produce an action, I have to understand what this hearing is. Therefore, it would seem to me that it's much more than just the sound entering my air canal. I want you to look at, uh, at what God's word says in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt, led by Moses? Those rebels heard the very voice of God, yet they rebelled and even disbelieved. It was only sounds entering their air canal. They did not mix it with their faith. Look at what Paul writes to the Corinthians church about those same people. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed 
through the sea. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food. All drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. And the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 5. And why were they overthrown in the wilderness? Because of unbelief. They had no the faith, yet they heard the actual voice of God himself speaking to them from the thick darkness on the mountain. Moses wrote this concerning them, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 23 through 24. And as soon as you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, you came near to me, all the heads of the tribes and your elders. And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness. And we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. This day we have seen God's spirit. Speak with man, and man still live. There is no doubt that the people that Moses led out of Egypt heard the voice of God, and yet they still rebelled because of unbelief. So let us investigate this word hear, or hearing, or heard. We, we want to dig a little bit deeper into that. The, the writer of the book of Hebrews says this about people who have heard but still refuse to obey. Turn with me, please, to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. Now, some manuscripts have, it did not meet with faith in the hearers. Remember us discussing that same concept in our previous message? Well, now, I want us to dig just a little bit deeper and try to uncover the secrets of the hearers. Meaning that the word they heard did not benefit them because it did not meet or it was not mixed with the faith, but rather it met with unbelief. When we discussed the parable of the sower in our last message, we mentioned the same, same, the same concept. And I want to revisit that thought and explain it just a little bit deeper. Because there is a right way and a wrong way to hear. And both are critical. It's, it's, it's absolutely critical which one you choose. Because choosing the right one is crucial to your salvation or to our salvation. So I want us to recap verse 16 and then go into more detail on verse 17 and then we're gonna hit verse 18. Luke chapter eight and we're gonna read 16 through 17. No one after lighting a lamp covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret will not be known and come to light. Well, we covered most of that the last time, but it will do us good to recap because I believe that this is very, it's really important to us operating in the faith, in power. So, in the message we just read, Jesus is not talking about a literal lamp or a literal candle. He is talking about the knowledge of the saving grace of salvation. Once a hearer has become enlightened by the gospel, he or she has no choice but to share the good news with others. Those around them are those who they come in contact with. They do not put it under a bowl. They do not hide it under a bed, meaning they do not keep this good news of the gospel to themselves. They don't keep it shut up within them. Why? Because they simply cannot. They just can't. It is like fire shut up in their bones. Listen to me. This is really, really important. I want you to catch this. Because if you're going to walk in power, then you need to understand this. 
Jesus said, no one after lighting a lamp, or in other words, receiving knowledge, hides it, but rather they share that enlightenment with everyone around them. Whether those people are known to them or whether they're unknown to them, they share the good news. You see, when, in, in the New Testament, everyone who heard, they went up, they shared. When, when persecution broke out in Jerusalem, they were scattered disciples, except for the apostles, but the believers were, were scattered all over the world, and everywhere they went, they told the good news. They told what they were taught by the apostles. They told how Jesus what was was crucified, how he was buried, how he was raised to life again, and how he's coming back to get us. That is the good news. Jesus is coming back to get us. And that's the first thing you must start to do after receiving the, um, the saving grace or the knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. You share your testimony. You tell what Jesus has done for you. I want you to watch this now. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The word of God is living and active. And if the word of God is living and active, and when it comes to us through hearing, we must, we have no choice, we must mix it with oho pistis, the faith. Because if we do not, then it will lie dormant or it was like inactive until it is stirred up within us. And that's why Paul implored young Timothy to stir up the gifts that was in him. The ESV puts it this way, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. For this reason, I remind you to find into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. See, Paul realized that Timothy was not using the gift of God that he had received through the laying on of Paul's hands. And that too, that receiving of the gift from, from the laying on of Paul's hands, that was by faith. He received it by faith. It was transferred to him by faith. But fear had kept the gift dormant. It had kept it inactive in Tim Tim. He did not put it into action. Now Paul is encouraging Timothy to stir up or to mix up what he had heard with this oho pistis, the faith. He's saying, do not nullify the word of God because of fear. Then he encourages Timothy to share in suffering for the gospel. Do not be afraid to suffer for the gospel. Maybe Timothy was afraid of persecution because of his age, because he was a young man. Maybe he was afraid of being persecuted and laughed at and made fun of for moving and signs and wonders and miracles like they persecute churches, churches like Bethel. But either way, Paul is telling young Timothy not to be intimidated, whatever the reason. Because in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we did not receive the spirit of fear from God. That spirit came from the devil and was propagated and pushed by the haters, his workers. Those people who pushed that are working for the one who, who, who brought fear into the world. We are not to be intimidated and we are not to compromise because we have been endowed with power from on high. We are commissioned by God himself to do great and marvelous things no matter what the critics say, no matter what they do. We do not answer to them. We answer to God and to God alone. God said, said Jesus said, let me tell you who it is that you should fear. Don't fear him who can just kill the body and can't do anything else to you. He can just kill the body. Fear him who can kill both the body and the soul in hell. Don't, don't, don't fear those who, who can't do that, but fear him who can. So we fear God because he's the only one who can do something like that. But, but um, that power, that power that... that um, that Paul was talking about. He, he, that is the same power that Jesus told his disciples to tarry in Jerusalem until they were endowed with 
tarry in, in Jerusalem until you're endowed with power. It has come. That power has come. The power is here in the form and in the person of the Holy Spirit. So listen to this. If the word of God is living and active, then we have no choice but to mix it with Ohopistus, the faith. Otherwise, we are in danger of losing our blessings to someone else. Because it's like what Morde Mordecai told his niece, Esther. Maybe you have come to royal position for such a time as this. And if you keep silent now, God will raise up deliverance for the Jews from somewhere else, from someone else. But for you and your family, you will suffer loss. So just because you receive a rainbow word does not mean it will automatically come to pass. You must mix that word with the faith because the people of Moses or the people that Moses led out of, of Egypt, they had a rainbow word, but they did not mix it with the faith. So do not be led astray. Do not believe the lie that what God has for me, nobody can take it. Because... If you do not act on it, it will be taken from you and given to someone who already has, and they will have even more. Now, because God word, God's word is alive and active, it refuses to lie dormant. It refuses to be hidden in the ground. Because God's word is a reproducer, it is a multiplier, it is an increaser, it is a provider. It is like that little mustard seed that is the smallest of all the seeds, but grows into the largest of all the garden plants and blesses all those around it. Listen to what God said about his own word, written in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 through 11. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in a thing for which I sent it. God's word is not returned to him empty-handed. It refuses to be void. It refuses to be made impotent because he or she to whom it was sent refuses to mix it with oho pistis, the faith. God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well. Now listen, for I am watching over my word to perform it. And because God is watching over his word to perform it, it will come to pass. Everything he has said, every promise that he has promised, it will come to pass. Nothing and not one of God's good promises will fall to the ground. Not one of God's good promises will fail. It will, it shall, it must come to pass. Take a look at what Jesus says will happen to the rhema word in Luke chapter 8 verse 17. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. You see, at first glance, we could misunderstand that because it would appear that Jesus was talking about judgment day and talking about hidden sins. But that is not what he was talking about at all. Jesus is talking about hearing. Let us make a connection here. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. God does not want the matter to stay concealed. He wants us to dig. He wants us to search it out. He wants us to mix it with oho pistis, the faith. Look at what God told the Israelites when he delivered them out of Egypt. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. In other words, when God conceals a matter, it is not, and it is not search, searched out 
then it stays with God because it belongs to God. But when man puts his mind to search out those things, search out those hidden matters, the things of God, God rewards the diligent studying with revelation or illumination and reveals the hidden things. Now it belongs to us and to our children forever. See, we can use them to fulfill the gospel or, or, or to preach the whole gospel. That is to save the lost, to heal the sick, to open blind eyes and to make the lame walk, to drive out demons, to drive out unclean spirits and to heal all manner of sicknesses in his name that he may receive honor and glory, that he might receive praises from people. Also, please notice, God does not forget our offspring. He will bless them and will reward them because of our diligence, because of our obedience. Likewise, they will not benefit from our laxness. They will not benefit from our disobedience. Anyway. Jesus told us in Luke chapter 8, verse 16 through 17, no one after lighting the lamp covers it with a jar or puts it under the bed, but puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Now you understand what Jesus said was saying. I want you now to look at this. Luke chapter 8, verse 18. Take care then how you hear, for to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. Remember, we dealt with the parable of the talents in our hidden faith. Well, Jesus is alluding to that same concept when he said that. He said, take care then how you hear. Otherwise, what you have will be taken away from you and given to him who has, who already has. Is what happened in the parable. Remember the servant who hid his one talent? Well, that talent was taken away from him and given to the one who had the five talents and turned it into ten talents. Now, I want you to watch this. Watch this. The number five is the number of the church, is the number of the bride of Christ, and the number ten is the number of covenant or of power, right? Jesus was saying that I am making a covenant with my church, number five, that whatsoever you ask, I will do for you, and you will multiply and increase. But if you do not what you're supposed to do, if you don't do that, in other words, if you are disobedient, I will take away what you believe that you have, which is actually hidden in the ground, and give it to him, who will give me a return on my investment. I'm looking for ROI, return on my investment. If you do not do what you're supposed to do, Jesus is gonna take it away and he's gonna give it to that one. Then he labeled the one who said, who, who hid his, his, his um, talent in the ground, he labeled him a wicked servant. Now I want you to turn to Proverbs Chapter 13, verse 22. It says, the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Now, could it be that Jesus was referring to this proverb when he, he talked about true riches after telling the parable of the shrewd manager in Luke chapter 16, verse 11. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you true riches? Just think about that for just a second. Because likewise, in the parable of the sower, the master ordered that the one talent be taken away from him and given to the one 
or it was not given to the one with the two talents and turned it into five talents. No, it wasn't given to him because the servant, that servant, the one with the two talents who turned it into five represents the church who only understands the power of agreement, which is good. That is very good. We need to understand the power of great agreement. But the talent was ordered to be given to the one who had five talents, who then turned it into ten talents. He not only represents the church who understands the power of agreement, but he represents the covenant-keeping church, the one who understood all things and believed all things, the one who said nothing that Jesus has given me will be impossible for me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can have all, all that Jesus said that I can have because the word of God will not return to him void. It will accomplish everything that he sent it. So if he sent it to me, said I can have it, I can have it. I can ask whatever I desire and Jesus will do it for me. I believe it, thus saith the Lord. It was he who gave the master the greatest return on investment. Therefore, it was he who received the one talent more. More will be given. Therefore, we are to take care then how we hear. And if that is the case then, there must be a right way and there must be a wrong way to hear. What do I mean by that? Well, let me define this word hear. That word translated hearing is the Greek word ara. And I want to quote. It has one, the active significance of the sense or organ of hearing. That is what we talked about just now, passing through the air into the air canal. It also has two, the passive sense of a rumor or report which is heard. In this sense, Achan approximately closely to Greek word, and then the Septuagint, and then the um, Hebrew word, and then another Greek word, and can be a technical term for proclamation or preaching. I want you to understand that this preaching is the charisma. The preaching or the proclamation of Jesus and him crucified and raised to life again and seated at the right hand of God the Father. And now, continue with the quote from the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. The emphasis always falls, of course, on the one who hears the proclamation, as in Romans chapter 10, verse 16. With the significance, there is a return to the prophetic usage, Romans chapter 10, verse 16, John chapter 12, verse 38, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Again, there's no doubt as to the meaning of Galatians chapter 3, verse 2 and 5. The true reading is not Greek word, Greek word, Greek word, Greek word, and in correspondence with another Greek word, and does not mean believing, hearing, but the preaching of faith, that is proclamation, which has faith as its content and goal. It's, it's taken from the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, end of quote. So what all of that is saying, my brothers and sisters, is that the wrong way of hearing is letting hearing or letting sound, letting words uh, pass through our air canal as they say, pass through one ear and out the other without mixing it with faith or putting it into action. That is the first usage of hearing. That is the wrong way. That is like the servant with the one talent. See, he, 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 he didn't put it into faith because he was afraid. Fear will always cancel faith. Similarly, it is the first type of ground that the sower sowed in. And in the parable of the sower, it is that hearer. That is the equivalent of God sending you a rhema word and you do nothing with it. 
You get a word from God, but you refuse to believe it. You refuse to mix it with Olopistus, the faith. It is like what Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? See, the second type of hearing is this. It is hearing that is both present and active, as well as past and active. No matter. It's always, 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 always active. It is the servant with the five talents. Also, it is the fourth kind of, uh, of soil that the sower sowed in. It's that fourth hearer, the seed, or the word of God was received with gladness of heart and immediately acted upon and produced a hundredfold. See, we recall what has happened in the past to spark the fire of faith. The fire of faith is then fueled by the present and active word of God we just received or the word that we just heard. So then, it is very, very important that hearing must, must be mixed with or met with or coupled with faith or belief. This is a belief that you have heard or what you have heard is true. And not only that is true, but it can be trusted. And not only that it can be trusted, but that it is for you. You gotta believe that this word is your word and you gotta receive it. You gotta hold on to it. You gotta mix it with the faith. Now look at what Jesus said in Mark chapter 24, or sorry, Mark chapter 4, verse 24 and 25. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And still more will be added to you. For to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Hearing is so important that first Jesus said, be careful how you hear. Now he is pay he's saying, Pay attention to what you hear. Did you notice that? First it's how you hear. Now it's what you hear. And then he goes on to say, For with the measure that you use it, use what? Use faith. It will be measured out to you. And still more will be added to you. In other words, you will grow in faith. It is that mustard seed concept all over again. It starts out small, but goes into mountain moving faith. This is why people could bring handkerchiefs and aprons and place it on Paul's body and demons would come out. Diseases would be healed. That's why sick people was placed along or laid along the path where, where Peter would eventually um, show up and his shadow would fall upon them and just the shadow of Peter falling upon those sick people they would rise up they would be healed that is the word of God coupled with faith that's why Paul Peter and John were so confident when they said silver and gold have I not I don't have any of that stuff but what I do have I will give you they were confident and what they have. And we have so much more to say about this, but we're limited on time in this message. So I want you to please, please join us next week so that we can finish up, oh, not, not next week, and not the following week, but the week after that, so we can finish up this, this, this message. So, so, so I wanna talk to you about the logos. I wanna talk to you about the rhema word of God. Right now, I want to ask, <clears throat> is there anybody in the sound of my voice, anybody who is hearing this, are you sick in body? I want to pray for you. Is there anybody who's troubled in spirit? I want to pray for you. Is there anybody who's unsettled in mind? I want to pray for you. Because Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
by his stripes, you are healed. We're healed. Jesus paid for it. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have your word, your rhema word, that we are healed. Silver and gold we do not have, but what we do have, that's your word. We give it. So by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that Jesus our Lord has given us, I command every evil spirit, every tormenting spirit to come out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We command you to leave now by the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. We speak healing into bodies right now. Cancer, the spirit of cancer will rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And we command you to come out of that body and we declare healing in the name of Jesus. Hearing, return. Tongues, be loosed. Blood diseases. We command healing in the name and the authority of Jesus. Lord God, your word says that we shall decree a thing and it will be established. For us and your light will shine upon our paths oh Lord God that you might receive honor that you might receive glory from the healings that have just taken place in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth thank you Lord amen is there anybody out there who do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior but you would like to know him. Would you like to know this loving savior? The God who got off of his throne and came to earth to pay for your sins, for my sins, for your family's sins, for my family's sins, for the sins of the whole world, that whomsoever will, let him come, let him drink freely, let him eat that free bread. Freely, Jesus has given us. Is there anybody like that who desire a relationship with Jesus? Repeat this prayer. Mean it from the bottom of your heart. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I want to be your servant. I want to live in eternity with you. Lord Jesus, help me to have that mustard seed of faith. Help me to grow to mature to a grown mustard tree that's the largest of all the garden plants. That those around me may benefit from the good news that I have received, that I have accepted. Now, Lord God, give me boldness, give me confidence to tell my testimony. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I want you to do now is to buy yourself a Bible, get into the Word of God, begin to read, and God will speak through His written Word. He will give you a rainbow word, and we'll talk more about that in the, um, and maybe in the next one um, message. But we will talk more about that in the future in this series. But I want you to read the Word of God. I want you to, to uh, build a relationship with Jesus. It's all about a relationship with Jesus. Build up your faith. Find a Bible-believing church, not one of those who, who don't believe that, that, that miracles can still happen, who don't believe that Jesus still heals, who don't believe that God still loves us. 
still has a relationship with us, who, who wants to free our minds because he has paid the price for us. Now he doesn't want to give it to us. Stay away from those kind of churches. Believe that God still God and he still loves us, still wants to heal us, still wants to deliver us, still wants to save us, still wants to have a relationship with us. Get discipled in a church like that. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing, that he wants you to be doing. And he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And you'll spend all eternity with him. Praise the Lord. That is what we're looking for. The day when Jesus comes back to redeem his church, his people, the blood bond. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Kenny Yates. This is Hold Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.